Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Lepakshi Khurana. Here are the top stories we're tracking for you on Wednesday, the 6th of November. Schools reopen as Indian capital records respite from air pollution. Pakistan releases controversial video on cross-border Kartarpur corridor. An international textile expo begins in Northeast India. And now for all the details, schools across Indian capital New Delhi and neighboring region reopened on Wednesday even as the air quality remained poor after an extended break due to severe pollution. The Delhi government had announced the closure of schools till 5th of November after pollution levels tipped to severe plus category on Friday. Schools across Indian capital New Delhi and neighboring region reopened on Wednesday even as the air quality remained poor after an extended break due to severe pollution. According to government monitoring stations, the air quality slightly improved on Wednesday morning from severe to poor. Students were wearing face masks to protect themselves from the toxic air as they returned to schools. Most schools are still suspending outdoor activities until air quality improves. The Delhi government has announced the closure of schools till 5th of November after pollution levels dipped to severe plus category on Friday. We are feeling good and the weather is also good. We are problem before, now it's okay. In order to tackle smoke that has left people gasping for breath since last week, New Delhi has declared a public health emergency, banning construction, restricting the use of private cars according to odd even number plates. A video song released by Pakistan on the Kartarpur corridor has led to a controversy as it features a poster in the background of three slain Khalistani separatist leaders. The cross-border Kartarpur corridor between India and Pakistan is scheduled to be inaugurated next week on the occasion of 550th birth anniversary of Sikhism's founder Guru Nanak. A video song on the Kartarpur corridor released by the Pakistan government earlier this week has led to a controversy for featuring pictures of three slain Khalistani separatist leaders. The video song released a week ahead of the opening of the cross-border pilgrim corridor between India and Pakistan went viral on social media for featuring Sikh pilgrims and shrines in many parts of the country. However, the video also gained traction for featuring a poster in the background of Khalistani separatist leaders Jarnail Singh Bhindrawale, Bhai Amrik Singh and Major General Dismissed Shabek Singh, who were killed during Operation Blue Star by the Indian Army in June 1984. Chief Minister of India's Punjab Province, Captain Amrinder Singh, raised concerns on Wednesday that Pakistan could misuse the corridor to revive Sikh militancy in Punjab. I have seen that video. I have not seen the video, but I have seen the video. And I am saying that we have to be very careful to be very careful in the way they are doing it. A long-standing wish of the Sikhs in India, the Kartarpur Corridor will enable visa-free entry of Indian pilgrims to visit Gurdwara Kartarpur Sahib in Pakistan. Several Indian intelligence agencies and experts have, however, cautioned Pakistan's intentions of opening the route. Moving on, Pakistan has expressed its disappointment over a U.S. report criticizing it for its failure to significantly limit militant outfits like the lashkar e taiba and the jaish e mohammed from fundraising and recruiting. Pakistan's foreign office in a statement said that the report completely overlooks the factual situation on the ground. Pakistan on Tuesday expressed disappointment over a U.S. report criticizing it for its failure to significantly limit militant outfits like the Lashkar-e-Toyba 
and Jesh e Muhammad from fundraising and recruiting. While several terrorist groups that focus on attacks outside the country continued to operate from its soil in 2018. Reacting on the report, Pakistan's foreign ministry in a statement said, The report completely overlooks the factual situation on the ground. Pakistan was committed to take concrete actions. Under its national action plan to eliminate terrorism, the foreign office said. The U.S. State Department's country report on terrorism 2018 on Friday said, that the Pakistani government did not restrict the Taliban and the Haqqani network from operating in Pakistan-based safe havens and threatening the U.S. and Afghan forces. The U.S. report observed that the government and military acted inconsistently with respect to terrorist safe havens throughout the country. In news from Afghanistan, the Afghan border forces remain on alert in eastern Narai district along the Duran line following an exchange of motor and rocket fire with Pakistan late last month. The Duran line is a de facto border between Afghanistan and Pakistan. The Afghan border forces remain on alert in Narai district in the eastern Kunar province following an exchange of motor and rocket fire with Pakistan late last month. The Narai district is located along the Durand Line, a de facto border between Afghanistan and Pakistan. Durand Line runs almost 2,400 kilometers between the two neighboring countries. Border forces reportedly said the skirmishes started when Pakistani troops tried to build a military installation in international border areas, which according to the Afghan side is a provocation. Meanwhile, Pakistan on Tuesday said it will have fenced off its traditionally porous border with Afghanistan by the end of next year, leading to an improved security situation in the region. In news from Nepal, co-chairman of ruling Nepal Communist Party Pushp Kamal Dehel has said he does not crave the Prime Minister's post as just being the leader he can heed people's problems and convey them to the government. Co-chairman of the ruling Nepal Communist Party on NCP, Pushpa Kamal Dahal has denied that he craves the post of the Prime Minister. Dahal on Tuesday said as he can presently at least visit people, hit their problems and convey them to the government, which wouldn't be possible if he was occupying the executive seat. The remarks by the NCP leader came after Prime Minister K.P. Sharma Oli in August said he would step down from the coveted post only after the next general elections. The statement by Oli, who is also co-chair of NCP, led many party leaders to speculate if he is attempting to put to rest the gentleman's agreement. The gentleman's agreement was made public in May last year, according to which Oli and the Hull were to lead the government by turns two and a half years each. Oli's CPN UNML and CPN MC of Dahal had reached the agreement to have leaders from both parties in the Central Committee of the Unified Party before the last general elections. Sri Lankan Prime Minister Ralin Vikramasinghe has said the opposition Rajapaksa team is working to sow communalism and gain power in the country. Vikramasinghe made the remarks while campaigning for Sajid Premadasa, the presidential candidate of the ruling United National Front. Sri Lanka's Prime Minister Ranil Vikramasinghe has said, although everyone's wish is to establish a Sri Lankan identity, the opposition Rajapaksa team is working to sow communalism and gain power. Addressing a cluster meeting on Tuesday, the Prime Minister said, the 25-year-long civil war took place in the country since we forgot the Sri Lankan identity. While urging people to vote for Sajid Premadasa, the presidential candidate of the United National Front Alliance, Vikramasinghe said, the ruling alliance's policy is to take Sri Lanka forward with unity and consensus of all ethnic groups under a Sri Lankan identity. Sajid Premadasa is facing a challenge from former wartime defence chief Gothabaya Rajapaksa, who has promised to ramp up national security and stamp out Islamist militancy. The issue has taken the central stage in the election following the bombings on churches and luxury hotels that killed more than 250 people on Easter Sunday. The presidential election in the island nation is slated to be held on November 16th. 
An international textile expo has been organized in northeastern India with the aim to showcase all exquisite and uniquely beautiful products of Manipur with participation of different Indian provinces and countries. The trade expo will conclude on November 14th. A 10-day-long Manipur International Textile Expo or Manitex began in India's Imphal city with great fervor on Tuesday. The event was inaugurated by the governor of Manipur province, Najma Hepudullah, at the Trade and Expo Center in the city. The textile expo has a total of 333 stalls, which include four stalls from Thailand, nine from Bangladesh and one from Myanmar, apart from the stalls from other Indian provinces. The Manipur government has been organized uh, district level expo and then uh, state level expo and regional level expo and national level expo. However, this expo could not be complete in full without the participation of the foreign uh, team. Then because of that, the state government has decided in 2018 to upgrade from the national level to international level. The main objective of Minitex is to showcase all exquisite and uniquely beautiful products of handlooms, handicrafts and embroidery and also Manipuri costumes to a larger platform with participation of different Indian provinces and countries. Programs like Fashion Week will also be staged during the event. The Trade Expo will conclude on November 14th. Hundreds of devotees in South India took part in a colourful procession in which idols of Hindu god Vishnu were carried to the Royal Palace of Trivancore earlier this week. The traditional procession marked the end of a 10-day festival that began from the temple. Devotees in India's southern Padmanabha Swami temple took the idols of Hindu god Vishnu to the Royal Palace of Trivancore earlier this week in a colourful procession led by capris and elephants during an annual festival. The traditional Aratu procession marked the end of a 10-day festival that began from the temple and continued till the royal palace of King of Travancore Marthan near Shangumugam beach. Local residents and tourists gathered to watch decorated temple elephants, singing devotees, traditional costumes and colourful festivities. It is starting from the western Ada of the Badanaba Swami Temple and uh, with uh, the Marthanda Varma Maharaja in the front, we, with so many people uh, together, they will watch, walk along up to the palace place near Sangamuham. Uh, it is around 5 kilometers. We are very much excited about this. The celebrations and the honour given to the Lord here is a very different thing and uh, the police here or security forces, they are also giving a great admiration to him. The grand procession included the idols of Padmanabha Swami Narsimha Murthy and Thiru Vambadi Krishna which were paraded in the city. The head of the Travancore royal family led the procession by wielding ceremonial sword. Well, that's the way it was in South Asia this evening. Before we conclude, the top stories once again. Schools reopen as Indian capital records respite from air pollution. Pakistan releases controversial video on cross-border Kartarpur corridor. An international textile expo begins in northeast India. Our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianNewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SouthAsianNewsline and follow us on Twitter at SouthAsianNewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.